Hi everybody, and welcome to the first tutorial video for Bloomhost. Today we're going to be taking a look at Bloom's custom-built server panel called Duck Panel and all of the different features that it provides. This is an overview video, so a lot of these features are going to have more in-depth videos created for them in the future. Duck Panel is built off of a server panel called Pterodactyl, um, but it's a lot more customized in a lot of different ways. And so today we're going to be taking a look at all these different features. Starting with the console page here, this is your landing page for your server. Right here is your server console and you can access it and type in it as you would any other server console. Up here is a button if you want to change Bloom servers. If you operate multiple of them, you can switch between them easily. These are a bunch of uh, status icons for your server, including your server status, whether or not your server is running, your IP address, your server ID, and then your CPU, RAM, and storage usage. Down here are the buttons related to starting, restarting, and stopping your server. Over here, there's a button to upload your server log. So if you're having an issue with your server and you want Bloom to immediately have access to your server files, you can upload a log here. Down here are just graphs related to your memory usage, your CPU usage, and your network usage. Let's go over to the file manager here. This is where you can access all of the files that your server uses. And over here are a bunch of functions related to creating and uploading files. You can even download a file directly from a URL. Over here in the database page, this is where you can manage your uh, MySQL, MariaDB databases. Sometimes a plugin or tool that you install on your server will give you the option of whether or not you want to store its data in a database and you can create a database here and these are a bunch of functions related to uh, editing or deleting or viewing the contents of the database. Over here in the schedule section, here you can have certain functions run on a certain clock cycle or for example like a certain time of day on your server. So you can create a schedule here, and you can even access some templates here such as a daily restart or an automatic backup system. I have one going right now to have a daily restart at 7pm local time every day. Over here in the users tab, this is where you can add sub-users to your server. So for example, if you have some sysadmins that you want to add and give permissions to for them to edit certain parts of your server via duck panel, you can add a new user here. And these are all of the different permissions that you can grant to them. Moving over to the activity log section, this is essentially an audit log of every duck panel function that is run on your server by either you or a sub-user. So you can search all the actions here. You can even expand each action and show details here. This is essentially just used if you want to view who is editing your server for what reason. If we go to the backup section here, Bloom allows you to take a certain number of backups depending on the server plan you have. So for example, I have a server backup here. You can even go over here and restore a backup or mount the backup if you want to have your current server files and the backup files in your file explorer at the same time to compare between them. And the button to create a backup is right here. You can even lock backups as well so that they don't delete themselves after a certain amount of time. Going over to the ports and proxies tab, sometimes a plugin or external tool on your server will ask you to open a port or type in a reverse proxy uh, in order to open a web connection for your server. And you can do either of those things on this page. You can even make your server internal if you're trying to use it as an internal server on, say, a network like Bungie Cord or Velocity. If we go to the subdomain tab over here, you can access a free subdomain for your server. So for example, I can do awesome server dot minecraft dot best or blockworlds dot io here and then my players can actually connect to the server via this IP address. If we go to the server splitter, this is one of Bloom's most unique features for DuckPanel. Here, you can actually allocate some of your server plan's resources in order to create a server split, a sub-server, that operates independently of the main server. This is especially useful if you want multiple servers to be running at the same time, like on a network, and you can manage each of those individually. If we go to the server importer here, if you want to import your server files from a different host to Bloom so that you don't have to start from square one, you can do so on this page. 
If we go to the startup page, you can find a lot of settings related to startup parameters of your server, including the startup flags of your server. These are Java flags that are used when your server starts up. They're very optimized by default. You can also change your server jar file and you can change the Java version up here. If we go to the settings page, we'll find more parameters related to settings of your server, including but not limited to your SFTP details if you want to access your server files with an FTP or SFTP client. You can even reinstall all of your server files here. You can change the type of your server. So for example, you could change it to like a fabric server or even the version of Minecraft that you want to go on. You can also change between games. So Minecraft, Rust, Terraria, or a Discord bot or the no support servers that Bloom also provides. Now let's venture over into the Minecraft header over here. If we click on the player manager, we'll see a bunch of functions related to players on our server. So if anyone was online, we could see them here. We can also ban players and see banned players here. Same thing for IP addresses. We can also see who's opt on our server or opt players. And if players are whitelisted on the server, we can see them here. We can enable or disable the server whitelist. Going down to the plugins tab, if we have any plugins installed on our server, we can see them here. We can also automatically install plugins. And we can do the same thing with mod packs. There are a lot of vetted and supported mod packs that Bloom has here. And it's a one click install for any of these. And we can also find info about the mod pack by hitting the info button here. Briefly going over the account management stuff over here. If you clicked on my servers, you'd be able to see a list of all of your servers that you operate on Bloom, similar to that top drop down menu on your console page. You can access account details here. If you want to do API or SSH key stuff, you can do so from hitting either of these buttons. This button here will take you to the billing portal. You can also log out of your account here. And then down below, we have support tabs, which will take you to the Discord support page, the billing support page, and also the knowledge base page right down here. That is pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions about anything I've said here today, either leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server and ask them there. A link to that is also in the description of this video. Uh, again, there are a lot of functions here that will be receiving more in-depth videos later down the line, but hopefully this overview served to show you why DuckPanel is so cool and why it's so helpful for managing a server. That's all we have for today. Thank you for choosing Bloomhost and we'll see you in the next video.